My name is Philip uh, Guarino, I'm the Director of, uh, for Europe for China Luxury Advisors. We basically are an advisory firm to luxury firms um, on issues around uh, engagement with the global traveling Chinese consumers. So we do quite a bit of work on, um, on uh, digital strategy, we do a lot of work with influencer analytics uh, and uh, 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 retail, retail insights as well. Um, so, just to start off, um, to, to respond uh, to your very insightful observations, um, uh, we, we look, the way that we look at China is, um, is very different. And, and, and we, look at, we, we like to say that China is more of a demographic instead of looking at it as a geography. And I think, I, I think that particularly when you look at the luxury industry or the industry that we're working in, You've got eighty percent of sales happening abroad, uh, and at the you have a hundred percent of company investment that is happening, however, in China to engage with this customer. So there's a complete disconnect of of investment and opportunity, um, and so and, and we've seen this we've we've seen this um, uh, this 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 issue in terms of. Um, firms uh, following this geography, this geographical uh, approach to China over the past six or seven years with this vast expansion of retail locations in China. Um, and, and now we're seeing the retreat from that uh, because uh, they're realizing that the consumer behavior is different um, and they need to be able to respond to that. Uh, and WeChat actually, um, we see as probably one of the most revolutionary tools uh, because it actually, in, in, in essence, is a uh, demographic tool. It is a tool that operates across border, uh, cross borders. Um, and, um, and, and, and however, the deployment of WeChat uh, by most luxury firms has to date been limited just to China. And I think that, that that's what I'd like to discuss today. Uh, briefly with you, um, and uh, some some of the challenges, you know, why that is the case, or why that has been the case up to date, and then also, what are some of the um, what are some of the uh, opportunities? Because the opportunities are immense. Um, so, and then after I speak, uh, Alex, uh, my colleague Alex here is going to speak a bit about some of the new functionality uh, with with WeChat uh, in terms of uh, the platform and and. Uh, and uh, Javier Fernandez from the Corte Inglés, uh, which uh, he is going to be presenting with some really ex excellent uh, examples of how the, they worked to engage with the Chinese uh, consumer and how WeChat was such a fundamental part of their overall strategy. So I'd like to just start out by saying, um, you know, what's happening with WeChat in, in, in Europe and in the US? The short answer is not much. Um, the longer answer is things are changing um, and there is more recognition on, on the part of, of, of firms that uh, this is something that they must deploy uh, in, their, in their North America and Europe um, operations. So the, 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 typically the question is, well, why? It seems so simple. These are technological solutions. They should be able to be deployed quite easily. Well. The first issue, and I think the most important issue, is the it is what what I would call a sen senior executive uh, approach uh, to tourism, and there are very few companies out there that have approached the tourist market in a strategic manner. What you see a lot of is you see a lot of very tactical approaches. So you have commission payments to tour guides, you have um, print advertising that is being done. Well. The, probably the last time that a 25-year-old in, in, uh, in China has picked up a, a magazine has been, uh, if ever. Uh, so, uh, the, you know, there, there's, there's, there's quite a bit of, I guess, uh, uh, wasted investment um, in trying to reach the consumer because it's focused on, it's focused primarily on tactics and not on an overall strategy. And there are many elements that, that comprise that. So I think number one, the most important thing is, is on an executive level, senior executive level, there needs to be a greater understanding of the potential um, of, of WeChat. Um, the, second, the second issue really has to do with um, what I would call a siloed approach 
to um, China. This is one of the once this is one of the reasons that it's it's been difficult to deploy uh, to WeChat in Europe and, and in the U.S. Uh, is that there's no real incentive for the retail manager or the retail director uh, in in Europe or uh, or in the U.S. to share information with his or her colleague in China. Currently, they're paid based on their their local P and Ls, uh, whereas at a senior level, the decision has to be made at some point that these, you know, these, these clients are global. Um, this demographic travels. Today they are in Paris. Tomorrow they, can, they will be, uh, they will be in, perhaps in Dubai. Next week they're in L LA. And these are all wonderful touch points for the brand um, that are not really being exploited. Um, and I think the third point, the third constraint is, 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 is also a lack of understanding of, of WeChat um, in and of itself. It's hard to explain WeChat to someone in the West that's not familiar with it. Typically, when you start to have that conversation, they say, oh yeah, of course, this is like another WhatsApp, right? And we say, no, this is not, because there is nothing like it. Um, there is nothing in, in the West of one platform where I can go in and buy movie tickets and book, and book an appointment with my, my doctor or uh, pay someone, uh, purchase products in advance. So the, the, um, the way that it's seen is primarily a messaging tool where one pushes communication. In reality, the, the true value and the immense value and the ability that I think WeChat has to really leapfrog over, over some fundamental problems um, or challenges, I should say, in the industry are around issues of, of engagement, of issues of activation, issues of CRM. Uh, so, and, uh, and, and this is, this is, this is uh, really, really critical. I mean, today, if you go into pretty much any of the, you, you go any, any of the large firms that are on the Champs-Élysées or Via Montaigne-Pont-Léon in Milan, there's no information being gathered on these clients. Um, they're walking in, they're walking around. Um, there's uh, many times they don't really understand uh, about the brand. Uh, but when you think about all the information that can be, that can be uh, captured uh, via WeChat, it, the, 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 the power of that is, is, is immense. And not just as a marketing tool to push out content, but to, to activate a sale, to, to continue to have a relationship with that client, to when they, when they return to, to China. But there are some things that are starting to change. Um, uh, there are, uh, in, in terms of firms, um, one example I can give you, one of our clients actually, Burberry, is, uh, has, has a very interesting approach now to, uh, to tourism, uh, WeChat, uh, and marketing initiatives. Uh, and, and this actually, I think, speaks to the, the complexity of WeChat and in the, in the, in the, its functionality crosses, I would say, uh, 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 functional areas within companies. So it's not just a digital product. It involves marketing. Um, it involves CRM. Um, it, 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 it could involve dis even distribution and, um, uh, uh, and, 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 and offline to online, so retail, the retail teams. So what, what, is, what has happened is you've seen more integration of teams uh, more integration of regions because they're realizing that this consumer is global and the requirements are cross-functional. Um, so in terms of, the, there are two examples. Um, uh, one interesting one uh, of, of how WeChat can solve some problems. I'll give you an example of the Zurich Airport, um, which is about to be, about to be the first um, fully, uh, fully uh, uh, WeChat equipped airport in, in Europe. Um, Without getting into great detail, essentially, when a when a when a when a visitor, a traveler arrives, they'll be able to, to open to, to open WeChat automatically, become a follower of of the airport. They have a live chat, which is which is uh, which is embedded. They can ask uh, where I, where can I find uh, a Burberry scarf? Uh, where is the duty free? Where can I uh, where can I find um, the uh, Luxembourg via from Springley? Uh, little macarons in, in uh, the airport in, uh, in Zurich. Uh, and so this solves, they can actually pre-order products before they depart or before they're even leaving Europe to pick them up so that they're ready. 
And, and, and this solves an incredible problem for airports because airports, 50% of their sales are lost because either A, the person doesn't know how to get to, to where they want to go, or B, the product is not available when, they, when, they, when they're actually at the airport. So there's a great example of how the, the, the deployment of, 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 of WeChat really improves the customer experience and solves a lot of problems for the, for the, for the, for the retailer. Um, we also launched a product uh, uh, called uh, Cicerone uh, Mobile, uh, which, is, which is also a, a, uh, a, 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 which was designed from our perspective coming from, uh, from how to improve the experience of a tourist. So essentially, uh, if, that, if that tourist walks into a Burberry location, uh, they turn their phone on, automatically become a follower, uh, their basic demographic information is passed to the brand. Uh, their information, uh, there, there can be loyalty cards embedded. Uh, their, their spending can be tracked. The goal, the fundamental goal is to A, improve their experience, B, be able to uh, influence purchase decisions at the point of sale, and C, really, in the long term, to build relationships across borders. Um, and this, I think is, is a tremendous, tremendous value um, in the long run for, for brands uh, because right now those touch points are so, so uh, 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 disjointed, if you will. Uh, so th very exciting things and lots more to come and I'll pass the baton to, to my colleague Alex here and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about um, some new and exciting things about WeChat. Thank you, Philip. Um, I'm the strategic global advisor for WeChat International, so that involves everything outside of China. Um, thanks to Philip, you know, my job is quite easy. Um, he does all the promotion for me, so at this point, uh, I can uh, get right into the details uh, of, uh, you know, some of the things that, you know, have made WeChat, I think, quite successful, obviously in China and now internationally. Um, you know, we doubled our numbers in the past two years from 100 million outside of China to 200 million. So when we say not much is happening in China, um, the perception on an individual basis may uh, seem to be the case, but in fact, um, the numbers as we see now are uh, multiplying virally, which is kind of uh, a stage we were hoping to get to at about 100 million. Once you reach it, when you download the app, you actually have friends to talk to, and that's really the experience that um, WeChat you know, strives for. Um, the, our main goal within WeChat is obviously to make the product as innovative as possible, which is including things that I addressed in my, uh, my keynote, um, you know, incorporating artificial intelligence, uh, augmented reality, uh, stores like uh, Burberry that incorporate some of these new technologies that are available through the platform and make the content a lot richer. Um, I think uh, things like the uh, shake function that has now been internationally adopted. You know, we were the first to adopt uh, a shake function, which is you could walk into a location that was beacon activated, you would shake your phone, it connects to your Bluetooth, from there you were given from coupons to valuable information, um, content essentially that relates to the, to the consumer or the user, um, which they appreciate. So uh, these are all things that happened many, many years ago in China and they're considered common there. Whereas you come to Europe and you're lucky to find a place that even has beacons installed. So again, when it comes back to technology, the adoption of technology in, in China specifically is you know, way advanced. Um, some of the reservation systems we heard about are way advanced. So China is definitely leading uh, on the forefront of innovation at this point in the mobile space. So the question then becomes, how do we as a Western company connect, you know, using that opportunity and this technology now in a simple way? I think Corte and Glez and I'll hand uh, the baton over to them so that they can continue explaining how they've been able to exploit that because they are the perfect example. They don't even have a physical presence. Uh, in China, so they don't have this whole issue about you know having to compete with stores in China and whatever. But they've been very successful um, through the efforts and you know analysis of how to use the WeChat tool and some of the support they've gotten in executing a I think a fairly brilliant strategy. Uh, and we tend to support that. You know these are the type of strategic partnerships that uh, I personally get involved in. Um, so I'll use this opportunity to pass on to the man of the house. Okay, thank you. Uh, um I think in the future, for me, the, the, the challenge of if you is, is to inspire Chinese consumer to spend money in Europe um, with a, a market of parity rates, of parity prices. Because for the moment, 
um, when we talk about Chinese market, it, 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 everybody think because everything, uh, every, everybody think they go to to Europe to spend money in the, in the stores because uh, a little bit on is cheaper here. Okay, so the challenge is how can we inspire people to spend money and to create employees in Europe through our tools like WeChat? How that com the behavior of Chinese consumer are transforming right now that more individual travelers uh, going to Spain, not even more uh, uh, to Spain, to Europe, not even more groups. And how can we do that? Our store in Madrid is the ninth store in terms of um, figures, of, uh, in terms of uh, revenue of tax-free in Europe, okay? Not bad. The first one is Harrods, okay? Uh, but Madrid is 10 times as sm the market of Madrid in terms of Chinese is 10, time, 10 times smaller than London and Paris, and five times smaller than Milano or Munich, for example. So how, how can El Corte Inglés Castellana to has these amazing figures in, ter in terms of Chinese spending? We don't have connections to China. Uh, how is it possible? Okay. One of the most successful um, experience in the, in, the, in the last month, have an amazing uh, um, action throughout with, with chat. Okay, we brought four influencers coming um, from, from China. The question here is to choose how influencers we need to do that. And the influencers, for me, it's not important how many followers they have. The influencers that we choose, we choose influencers that believe what we believe. Okay, the, this this is where remarkable things happen. Now, when you work with people who believe what you believe, and um, in this point, um, Philippe and Alex help us to choose for influencers in China to bring to Madrid and to to feel Madrid uh, as a city wherever they uh, where they they. Um, in the field they, they want. No, no, feel free to explain Madrid as, as, as they want, okay? And they, they talk about cuisine, they talk about everything in Madrid, and they create its, its own storytelling in our city. We, we work with, uh, with four platforms, okay, with their, their, their own platforms of, the, of, the, um, of these influencers, and we increased our presence in which are just in, in, in a few days, right? in a few weeks, at 500% more. Okay, so, but for me, the most, imp the most important question is no, 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 no increase our presence in WeChat. We increase our brand awareness as an experience, as a city, and as a retail destination. Okay, so from now, we are not working more in, 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 in groups. We are working in, in experience. We are working in individual travelers. Not only China, all over, all over the world, okay? To, to create um, a great shop, which is Europe, no? A great and amazing place to do shopping as, and to spend money. Because the question is not to count heads. <coughs> in Europe, we, we used to count heads. We have, uh, for example, um, we increase our, our tourism in Paris in 12%. But what, it, but, mm, what is this? In Spain, we have a lot of tourists coming to Spain, but they don't spend money in retail. Okay, we increase every year. Every year we have more, more tourists coming to, to Spain, but the figures in the retail are not growing in the same way as, as the tourists. So the question is, how can we inspire tourists to spend more money in, in Europe? This is, for me, this is a challenge in the, in the, in the next year. And for me, it's throughout the experience, the service, and the, and the storytelling, which but I'm, I'm here to help. Um, any, if anyone has any questions, we're happy to take any questions. Look, back to the original kind of topics that we sure. were uh, looking at about how to help uh, connect the P&L for stores in China yes. back to where, where the sales happen in Europe or in the US. 
What are specific steps you think companies should be taking to make that happen? Because when I bring it up in China a lot with them, they say, yeah. well, it's really difficult. We have a global operation. Uh, it doesn't work that way. How could it work that way? What would you advise them to do? Yeah, I think, I think um, the, uh, I would go back to my, my original point of it being a, truly a sea level decision. It has, has, it has to be a decision that is where the parties that are involved understand that they have, uh, they have something to gain. So both, both the team, for example, in Europe, they have something to gain, perhaps in a sale. It's, the folks in China have something to gain in terms of the information that they're receiving about the consumer. But none of that is going to happen unless at a sea level there's some shaking up of, of the existing either compensation structures, organizational structures. Um, I think some of those, some, some, those are some of the, the biggest challenges right now for, for companies. At the global level, at getting the them global on level. Board. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so part of the, the challenge to this, I, I understand from talking to these companies, is that they say sometimes the product number in Europe isn't the same as the product number in China. You know, even at that level, they said that's why we, this is one of the things why we can't do it. So it really needs someone senior, you're saying, to make it yes. happen. Um, you know, I think uh, my comment, uh, you know, on that level, and that, that's more of a business, obviously, marketing um, decision by the brands. Um, so I'm coming from a technology or um, social media uh, standpoint, and um, it's a little different there. But um, one observation I can make by dealing, I deal with most of the Fortune 500 global brands internationally, and I hear all the issues that they face. And one thing that always uh, you know, comes to mind is obviously if you take the U.S. market, 70% um, of the uh, retail sales there are from those uh, panda travelers that we've been talking about actually are occurring at Simon Malls, which are the famous uh, premium outlet malls. And so, you know, in Europe, you don't have the same amount of premium outlets. We have 85 of those in the United States. So 85 brand malls, of which four dominate pretty much 90% uh, of all sales. So our job in the U.S., which is just as large as Europe in terms of population and, and size, uh, has a much easier job because we're narrowing down basically that purchase to four stores. So when we, when we go out and develop um, WeChat strategies potentially with those, in this case it would be Simon Malls as a retailer and developer, within those malls there's obviously two to three hundred brands. So we get a lot of good feedback, we see the footprint of those, they start in Los Angeles, they go to San Francisco, from there they fly to New York, and if you're lucky they may come to Florida and fly back. So those are your kind of your four main destinations. Um, very similar to what we heard from Corte Inglés, it's um, very similar techniques that they're using within a more of a developer uh, environment to get those same sort of incentive programs, whether or not it's uh, their VIP uh, coupon booklet, etc. So what's interesting there is that the discussion never comes up that the New York boutique from Louis Vuitton is losing to you know an outlet you know store potentially, and Louis Vuitton is probably a bad example because they don't really have outlet stores at these malls. Uh, but take Gucci for example, I think that's a better or Jimmy Choo. So you know very good brands, obviously very popular with a Asian consumers right now, specifically Chinese. So they have not had this issue with the store in New York competing against 45 minutes away, you know, Woodbury, where the Jimmy Choo store sells amazing products. And some of them are, you know, even the same. Uh, they may not have certain sizes, and that's, again, how they have figured out internally how to um, potentially balance out that, this, this, uh, this equation. So when you do that on an international basis, there's obviously much more challenges. But I think, again, the brands have actually on that level, I think, in the U.S., done a, a fairly good job in making sure that that, uh, that sale is evened out. And there's no complaints, basically, from you know, the uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Choo retailers that their outlets are cannibalizing their sales in the cities. It's just it's sometimes even different products. So I don't think that's really a big issue. So what are some specific things that you like to do when you go to either an outlet mall or to a department store like Ocorte and Glace to get WeChat kind of in there and is operating with them, like QR codes or special Yeah, I think you know, it starts with, the, obviously, the ways of, um, the great thing about the WeChat user is that uh, you know he's constantly available. Um, that's being part of an um, over-the-top platform is that the system is always on, assuming you have a connection. So they either are roaming on their, on their phone. Uh, we're obviously working with different Wi-Fi solutions and telecom providers that actually give you these little routers so that they're constantly available. And I think that's the next thing you're going to see in Europe is more and more of these router-based uh, solutions. Uh, airports, uh, retailers, obviously, you know, s as simple as having Wi-Fi uh, for free uh, for those travelers is a huge issue. 
you know, we were fighting for years in the U.S. that Wi-Fi should be free. And then you get the Boingos who, you know, sort of, you know, lock up the air by paying huge premiums to get the rights to sell that air. So now the retailers have realized, yeah, maybe selling the air to a sponsor isn't the smartest thing. Maybe you should be owning the air because it's the retail space in the air that connects you to the online to offline. So these are things that took me about two to three years to explain to retailers, especially retail developers, that now are catching on. And once you have that, then it's a question of how do you draw it in through a, a shake function, the yow yow function, or is it the QR code? Is it a beacon system? And I think that's where the technology, it just depends on your preference of location, you know, what's available in those locations. You, you analyze that, uh, and then based on that, you draw them in. The draw comes through some of the things that we heard here, you know, specific uh, content-driven campaigns. Content, as we heard in several of the other speeches, content is king. So if you have poor content, whether or not you're a developer, a retailer, or a brand, you're not going to be successful in drawing in. We even heard on the travel site that the content, you know, how you actually arrange those packages. And even though you're an, a free independent traveler, you still want to be, have certain freedom in choosing within that package. So that's just a general trend in consumers. So at retailers, I think it's very similar. So they sort of determine what is the DNA that they're trying to match. And we heard here that that matching of the interest is very important. Once you achieve that on a content level, after you've drawn them in, and the drawing in is usually the catch, it happens at the venue, so the venues have now figured out how to do that, which means you just have to have WeChat readily available or accessible within those retail stores. They will follow you. Once they follow you, they have an expectation. Don't disappoint the expectation, because once you do that, they'll basically unfollow you, and then you've lost that opportunity. So I always use the example of a house, you know, it's my house. Once I give you the key, you come in, you, you decorate it with all the brands you want, you drink my beer and you walk out, I'm not gonna be too happy. So keep me happy and I'll let you continue to keep my key. No different with a WeChat user. Find ways to keep him in, in your house or continue to use his house, which is the key to his, his profile, and then be able to work with him through the content that you provide. One, one, for me, one of the key points of WeChat is we are now working not only uh, with the traveler that we have in the store. We are working with all the network at the same economical level with the same common value, with common values and beliefs. So for, for me, is, uh, WeChat is a short-term tool and a long-term tool because in the moment that we are, we are, we are have in, having impact with a traveler in your store, you are working with people in China that maybe they are thinking in a competitor when they travel to Europe in, in the next year, no? So this is... This is uh, amazing for, for us because we are working in the in in, in 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 near future. You know, one thing I'd like to just mention in terms of, again, and that comes back to strategy. And, you know, in my keynote address, I talked about, you know, first you have to have a, what, what I would call a WeChat strategy. And it's not just, you know, you have great digital departments. Most of the Western digital departments until recently were ignoring social media with the exception of Weibo in Japan, in uh, China, excuse me. Um, so WeChat now, obviously, um, is this force that they can't ignore and they're waking up and they're saying, gosh, you know, what did I miss for the past five years? There's this monster out there with 700 million users and we know that 200 million are coming, but we don't even have a connection to them or we don't know who they are. So that requires a simple thing. It requires a strategy to define within your corporation and among your digital teams internationally, and that's what I do again. My job is to go into corporations and they bring these teams from all around the world into one location and then we do workshops. And in those workshops, I literally just talk about what WeChat is so that at least the information is equal among those teams. Then you've obviously got the directors of those departments that then have to define with those teams a strategy. Once you have the strategy defined, then you figure out engagement techniques, whether or not you use creative agencies, ad agencies, you know, consultancies. That's just a matter of executing how. And we keep talking about, I mean, we heard it four times here and three times here, how. And I, I always emphasize that. The how is exactly the right question to ask. So if you're still asking like why WeChat, you know, you don't belong in this room because then you're not connecting with China. And you know, it's just as blunt as saying that you know, if you're in Europe, you're not gonna use Euro. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So it's not so much that we have to convince people to use WeChat, it's your opportunity to figure out the how and then draw them into your experience because they're part of your community. And if you view WeChat users as, or travel pandas, whatever, you, whatever term you may come up with them, ultimately, they're your friends and they're your community. And the lucky thing is that they spend money and purchase your service and products. 
That's ultimately, I think, the goal that you as a social media partner of WeChat end up experiencing. And if you feel that you're a partner of WeChat, then you ultimately get drawn through those users and through that experience, and you see the results. I, th I think you made an important point earlier, too, about the airports having the free Wi-Fi in Asia, where I live. You know, it's very normal in the airports to have free Wi-Fi because they figured out uh, you know, early on, for the, in, forget the money we could get for charging for this, if we offer the free uh, Wi-Fi, then our customers, our stores, can use that for location-based marketing, but even more importantly, to get the data. You know, they're following where people go, and they're using that to plan where the store should be. Yeah, and, and so that's I think for malls as well, I assume. Absolutely, and I think that's where the problem is that airports have been um, sort of offline, um, you know, properties. They've just been a, a, a touch point that every traveler is going to experience throughout his travel. He starts at an airport and he ends at a travel at an airport. Throughout that air that airport experience, he's probably going to be in touch with other airports. So when you take the top 20 airports of the world, it's actually a great opportunity. Each, I mean, Beijing Airport, 60 million people. Uh, Zurich Airport, 25 million people. I mean, you just go through the numbers. There are millions. And so what we looked at from WeChat's perspective is how do we Rather than focus on all the three, four billion people in the world, which you know, I don't need to convince, they will ultimately come if the experience is good. What I can do is I can focus my energy on the companies that are interested in becoming part of the community and that are part of these touch points like airports where you probably have the largest congregation of people at one single point. I mean, I don't know a single other venue that gets 60 million people in, in one year. I just don't. So if I can deal with the airport authority, which is two people, and get 60 million customers, that's a great opportunity. So from my perspective, I'd rather spend my resources and time focusing on that, figuring how to draw them into that community experience, and from there, then we can give, pass them on to the individual players that are participating within that community. But what that requires is that the airports allow you to become the platform with them, so rather than what we heard today, potentially building your own apps, take those existing apps and build them into our platform, so it's an app within an app, we have the 700 million users, we'll give you access to them, you create you know, terrific content to draw them in, and then you bring the brands that actually fulfill the needs and the wants of those travelers. That's a great experience and it's a great loop of a community to actually go, go out and exploit. And the same opportunities are for malls and stores as well. I mean, do you offer free Wi-Fi? Yes. You do? Yeah, makes sense. Yes, of course. No, but, it, but interesting to ch ch change something, uh, for example, in the airport. 25 million people could be 25 million consumers now. Um, if I think, if I think how brands communicate with me when I am in an airport is very poor. No, I don't know what is happening in the airport. I don't know if there's there's something special in a brand or something special in a in a restaurant, and could be interesting in the airport develop programs and develop applications to to make uh, the the time there more more effective, no? So 25 million consumers in a, in a place in a year is a lot of consumers, no? Right, and that's my point that, you know, you're not gonna get a single venue that has that many people, and what you have to do with those people, as you said, and we heard the, the term stress means, at an airport especially, stress and delays means less retail consumption. So what we've done is we've essentially partnered with um, certain players in the industry that um, have understood this concept now, and are willing to work with us to build these more com comprehensive platforms to allow that to happen, what you talked about, the integration of airport information, which is arrival, departure, baggage information, all the things that you would expect from an airport to deliver, which right now is very poorly, inf I mean, very poorly marked or, or provided by the, uh, inf uh, by the authorities of the airports. The second is the discovery component of what, as you said, what can you find at an airport? Uh, what are some of the services available? What is some of the information? And it doesn't just relate to purchasing. It's much, much bigger than that. When you arrive in the airport, you're looking for potentially, you know, how to use taxis, how to get bus rides, to train rides, uh, potential hotels, whatever it may be, services that you are going to be using throughout your trip. And maybe you are one of those FIPs that, you know, is going out there on your own and trying to figure this out. Then this platform becomes even more valuable. So that's a component. And then the travel component, obviously, which companies that we heard about today obviously do quite a good job on. So working with those type of companies for us is important. 
But it's really a, a combination of those things. And so what we're looking at launching at Zurich Airport would be essentially the first global platform that addresses those three you know, buckets and then combines them through valuable entertainment. There may be you know, WeChat lounges in the future, similar to your airline, airline lounges. And the idea there is to, again, allow this interaction on a digital level to happen within these lounges so you don't have to be a frequent flyer just to be able to access a lounge. All you have to do is be a WeChat user, be able to register um, or book your time on it, then you can access the lounge and from there you can experience a whole different world that you would typically get in an airport lounge, which is personally not that exciting. And it's your point, there's no entertainment value there. Do we have some questions in the audience? We've still got about five minutes left. We have a great panel here, so let's take advantage of it. Anyone? This is more like a quick uh, uh, update on the Chinese market. I just visited a few minutes ago from my colleague that WeChat is going to um, get even bigger in China, uh, if it can. Uh, WhatsApp just been blocked uh, in China. So I don't know how long if it's for good, but uh, uh, WhatsApp is uh, done. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, that's obviously, uh, the government, uh, you know, does a great job of protecting their own c uh, c companies, I guess, um, which is not really great for uh, net neutrality and, you know, open platforms. But, um, you know, we obviously, uh, because of that, have certain advantages, and which, again, enforces the issue even more, uh, that um, the good news is that the Chinese consumer doesn't view it as a negative um, because the platform is actually better. So it, as long as we continue to make a better product, whether or not you drive, and I used that example several times throughout the past two days, if you drive a Mercedes, a Citroen, or, or a BMW, it's really your choice. In China, it's kind of limited, that choice. Um, so that helped us get that advantage, obviously, to get to that number that we have today. Ultimately, though, users are very picky. And if you build a, a crappy product, they will find ways to circumvent it. There's obviously... Um, uh, a VPN networks that allow you to access, and I do it constantly. I, I get Facebook, Google, everything else I want in China every, every time I'm there. So uh, the whole issue about blocking it, yes, it blocks your viral you know, expansion because it goes much slower. There's loopholes that you have to find to get access to those platforms, but they are available. So uh, again, back to the product has to be good. But I think for us now, really the focus again um, on how do we bridge kind of uh, the West and the East in terms of this amazing tool, um, what I think everyone will find is that when you do use it in a, in a, in a way that was explained today, and this is on a, on a very micro level, um, now if you multiply the micro level onto a macro level, I think you find exactly that experience that we saw here. We get it on an individual basis, we get it on a micro retail basis, we get it on an airport basis. So at that point then things become a lot more fluid and the type of information and content that's being shared becomes a lot more entertaining and interesting. I think ultimately that's what the consumer wants. We have a couple of minutes left. Are there any sort of final points you want to make about unexploited opportunities for using VTech? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, from a technical, you know, um, I know a lot of people have asked me, you know, what are some of the new uh, technologies that are potentially going to be on the map for, for WeChat? I think uh, uh, the, from, a, from a content standpoint, most of our uh, innovation comes on the content side, how that content is being delivered. Obviously, I mentioned the three big buckets, uh, artificial intelligence, which includes things like face recognition, uh, voice recognition, um, then um, augmented reality, how to actually present that, that data that you're scanning or potentially capturing in a different way so that it's more, um, uh, more interesting. Then the third, obviously, which we heard a great presentation today by uh, Xanadu, which is uh, uh, VR. VR, I think, is the next big opportunity for WeChat. Within the Moments feed, there's great opportunities now that we have uh, the Moment feed ads. You can actually use VR experience to build some amazing things that are actually storytelling type of uh, 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 ads um, that I think will draw in even more uh, interest into the brand story. So that's another new component that we're focusing on. Um, obviously, within hardware, uh, Apple has done an Android both have done a great job in developing their hardware uh, capabilities in terms of allowing us as a software to take some of these capabilities like GPS, like shaking, gyro, uh, gyroscopics built into the devices to actually leverage that technology to deliver a better experience. The Western apps, in all fairness, have failed to do that. And that's obviously where China has just been very, very aggressive. And I can tell you our product team, all they do is constantly innovate in terms of new ideas that how can we make this experience on a phone 
more, um, more intriguing, more sticky. We call it stickiness. Um, so that people actually can't get away from their phone. It's actually, to a certain degree, like a drug. Uh, you know, you get them hooked and they can't get away. Well, the more they're hooked, the better the opportunity from many different you know, angles. But I think that's where WeChat as, a, as an app has to continue to innovate and find you know, innovative ways for you know, even companies that are you know, here today. Uh, find ways to connect to that platform in a very you know, convenient way so that the user experience ultimately gets better. Well, thank you very much. We're out of time, but that was a very interesting panel.